Good morning. Welcome to the Maryville Fallowfield Pastoral Charge on this fifth Sunday of the Easter season. Our pastoral charge is a church that is guided by the teachings of Jesus in an open-minded and progressive way. We are a diverse, open, and inclusive community where God's love knows no bonds. We welcome you to join us as we explore our relationship with God while enjoying being in the community with others who follow the same path. We try our best to promote God's inclusive love and our hearts are open to everyone, so we hope you will find comfort worshiping with us. <clears throat> if you are planning to attend the in-person services, our next service will be at Fallowfield on May 14. We will then be worshiping at Maryville United on May 21st and 28th. <clears throat> Please note that Eileen Malcolm will be preparing the bulletins for Sunday worship. Please send any announcements to her at Eileen Malcolm at simpatico.ca. A big thank you for all those who came out to help with the craft vendor market and the luncheon. Your dedication to our fundraisers is deeply appreciated. Beautiful hanging baskets are on sale again this year from Linda's Garden. 10 inch baskets for $32 include coleus, large petunias in yellow, bubblegum pink, purple, and mauve, orange nasturtiums, fuchsias, super bells with smaller flowers in two-tone mauve and white, pink and white, peach, pink, and black. Ivy geranium 12-inch baskets for $37 include two-tone red and white or pink. Please place your orders with Sue Deschamps at 613-226-1851 or online at joydivdiv13 at gmail.com. That is J-O-Y-D-I-V-T-H-I-R-T-E-E-N at gmail.com by May 6th. Pickup or delivery will be on May the 15th or soon thereafter. You won't be disappointed. Merrifield's plant sale is on May 27th from 9 to 12. It would be good if people started dividing their indoor plants for contributing. Drop-off plants will be Friday, May 26th from 10 to 12 or they may be placed under the trees in the parking lot. Fallowfield's fabulous frozen fruit pies are now ready, just in time for Mother's Day and the May long weekend. $20 per pie, apple, blueberry, mixed berry, peach, and raspberry. Pre-orders are welcome. Once they're sold, they're sold. So contact Sheila Allen early, 613-825-8219. As a pastoral charge dedicated to the teachings of Jesus, we do our best to help the many organizations in our city that need donations now more than ever. The Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, and the Ottawa Mission are just a few that need your generosity during these difficult times. You will find a list of these community services and more on our website. If you would like to donate to the church, you can do so online by e-transfer to much church at bell dot, bellnet dot ca, or you can send a check to either Maryville or Fallowfield Church. You can find each address on our website, which is www.maryvillefallowfield.org. These are all the announcements for now. These and other announcements can be found on our website. We hope that you will now sit back and enjoy the worship service that is all about our commitment to making the world a caring place. May the flame from this candle keep our feet firmly on the way where God leads us. May it help our words speak the truth that Jesus teaches us. May it fill our bodies with the life that is the Holy Spirit within us.
please join me in our opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we gather online for this fifth Sunday of the Easter season, let your presence be felt among us. Today, remind us how you walked faithfully with Jesus and his beloved disciples through the weeks after his resurrection. And they all knew that you were with them in spirit, guiding them every step along the way. Today, today we give thanks that you travel alongside each one of us each and every day. And as we worship this morning together in spirit, may peace and grace fill our thoughts and our hearts. Help us to live faith-filled lives that reflect the love found in the teachings of Jesus. And may we always be grateful that you call us into relationship and community with one another and with you. Today, Holy One, we will lay down our life challenges and rejoice in the mystery of your love. Help us to listen with open hearts and minds that we may find meaning in our worship today. And may we open ourselves to be strengthened by the Spirit's power as we say the prayer Jesus taught our ancestors in the faith. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, and it is entitled, Nicodemus Visits Jesus. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God 
without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit.
Our scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, and is entitled, The Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So much of our life is limited by our societal customs and traditions, and these limitations are not bad in and of themselves, because often they can serve a really good purpose. They can unite us in celebration and in community. And what's wrong with that? But what happens when we learn about someone's teachings, teachings that call us to go beyond our own comfort zone? What happens to us when these teachings call us to see the world through a new lens? And what if the teachings call us to free ourselves from old customs and cultural habits, as well as societal and religious restrictions? And what happens when a teacher, even though they lived over 2000 years ago, 
invites us into a new world defined by the mystery and promise of God's gifts of grace, peace, freedom, abundance, and liberating truth, not just for ourselves, but for all people and all of creation for that matter. What becomes of the old us when we answer the call that comes from a man who never lived in the modern era, a man who says we are to live in a different way, a way that honors all living things. People, animals, nature all around us are to be honored as sacred gifts. That's what Jesus says. What becomes of us when we accept the power to change and become one, not only with this teacher, this lover of life, but with all the people down through history who have strived to build a better world for all people? What if we align ourselves with their knowledge and wisdom, even though we have never met Jesus and never met those who have embraced his way of life, we can still learn from them. We can certainly learn to embrace their teachings because I believe their way of living is one of the ways, a good way, that can help us to grow and evolve and build up creation instead of tearing it down. The teachings of Jesus and teachings of all liberating people can help us with global poverty, climate change, economic disparity, racism, and you know the list goes on and on. It is time for an old, new kind of conversation that can help us come together as one united human family so that we can work together in solving critical issues facing our planet today. This is the nature of the conversation recorded in the Gospel of John, the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. It was a conversation that was initiated by Jesus to open up the hearer's heart and mind to a new birth, a spiritual birth, a birth that could change Nicodemus forever and prepare him for living in a new way in the world. When Nicodemus asked Jesus, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Jesus says, it is never too late. The only criteria is that you are born from the Spirit. It is the Spirit that comes to us from the teachings of Jesus and the Spirit of love, compassion, and peace creates a new birth in us. This conversation between these two men extends a divine invitation for us to be liberated from any shackles we may have and for us to experience the freedom of this new world Jesus talks about. Chapter by chapter in our gospel stories, stories like this one in the book of John, as well as teachings like the Beatitude, Jesus challenges our habits and are really old, outdated customs and traditions. Jesus' mission was to shatter our stagnant reality and cause us to hunger and thirst after righteousness, or in other words, for something new, something different, holy, mystical, and awe-inspiring. Over 2,000 years ago, Nicodemus was blown away by what Jesus was teaching. And today, in 2023, we should be too, because we've not fully understood it yet. Jesus says the Holy Spirit works in the hearts of those who begin to believe that we can turn things around. We can solve climate change. We can end world hunger. All children can be educated. Everyone can have all their medical needs met. We can put an end to religious intolerance and ethnic hatred and racism. And we can do all of this if we get rid of the limitations of old world thinking and old world living. People are ready for a new story. The story that says all humans are created in the image of the divine and all of creation is to be cared for and nurtured. Our old story of Jesus and his disciples can be a new story because it can help us to seek an end to anything that builds up walls on this beautiful blue planet. So many of us are tired, tired of people who build up walls that divide each one of us from the other. And we are tired of their ways. We are tired of those in power who keep dividing up humanity.
and we are tired of wars and we long for ways to overcome the social pitfalls of race, class, sexual identity, and poverty. And yes, we are hungry, and so was Jesus. Jesus was hungry and thirsty for a new world, a world where we celebrate the gifts of grace and truth and peace, and we look one another in the eye and recognize the kinship of sisters and brothers who are all created in the image of a beloved God. And blessed are those who hunger for the freedom of a new world, and blessed are those who live their lives in the manner of Jesus, sharing with others the gift of freedom and the divine invitation to be true believers in his teachings, and to also share in the divine invitation to be those who act out his teachings. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we know that every good gift in this world comes from you, and we believe in your great love for all people. And so today, as we leave this service, we pray that you will help us to live out the radical teachings of Jesus. And we believe that his mission was to share with the world your desire for love, freedom, justice, and dignity for all people. We know that your Holy Spirit continues to guide us through the teachings of Jesus, helping us with the task of transforming your world into a world where all people are treated with dignity and respect. We believe and have hope in the days ahead and know that you will give us the strength to go forward, building a just world, a fair and just world in which all of creation is seen as sacred. God, we ask blessings now upon all who gather for this worship, and we pray for all people who, with their love of humanity, create communities and churches where all are able to worship in the spirit of freedom. 
And now, Holy One, in a moment of silence, we offer up to you those people who we carry in our own hearts today. O God, as we leave our worship today, may our service to each other, to the world, and to the teachings of Jesus continue until we meet again. And may the peace that surpasses all understanding be with us as we go out into the world. We pray that you will help us to make a difference in the lives of all people we interact with. So let our words and actions always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. And now, as faithful disciples of Jesus, go out into the world in the love of God. Go into the world following in the footsteps of our rabbi and teacher, Jesus. And may we always feel the blessing of the Holy Spirit with us. Amen.